Today is the day. At long last, the two Lost to Time entries in the Mega Man Bow Network series, Mega Man Phantom of the Network and Mega Man Legend of the Network, are finally playable in English thanks to the outstanding efforts of Scilab Secrets preserving the games at the end of 2023 and the Rockman EXE Zone producing their high quality fan localization patch that is out right now. Of course, when it comes to getting set up to play, we aren't dealing with a Game Boy Advance or any other established console here. Instead, we have to figure out how to play a pair of Japanese flip phone games from the 2000s era. Thus, we are truly treading in uncharted waters here, and we realize that setup may not be the most user-friendly thing in the world. Thankfully, the folks at Scilab Secrets and Trez combined have made it as easy as humanly possible for you to get started. And I, ShadowRockCX, am here to walk you through the process so you can get to saving Net Society faster. If you need more information, please check out the README page included with the download for the localization patches, which will be in the video description, along with everything else you'll need. As of the time of release today, the only method of playing is by using the Doja SDK emulator. It is more of a test environment that was used by Docomo phone software developers to facilitate porting older games over, which the localization patch was built off of the 2000 Docomo ports of Phantom of Network and Legend of Network. As such, it's not the best or even most stable emulator out there. But that's all we have until the Squirrel JME emulator that promises to eventually run these types of games better gets further into development. For now, Scilab Secrets have ported the Doja emulator to Windows OS, and Trez has supplied a portable version in their download folder that we will be using. You can use the emulator either on Windows OS or on Steam Deck using Proton. That's it though. Apologies to the rest of you that don't have either of those platforms, you're out of luck for now. At least until Squirrel JME comes out. Once you download the localization patch and separately acquire the game files from Scilab Secrets, also in the description, we may begin. In the localization patch folder, go into the emulator folder and you will find a LN and PON folder inside. That is where we are going to place our patched game files in a bit. First, let's extract the Rock Band Ketai bunch of numbers zip folder that you should have gotten from Scilab Secrets and take a look inside. Open games and we'll find LN Chapter 1 and PON Chapter 1 through 3. Don't worry about the names, these are indeed the full games. For each of these, we are going to click through the folder structure until we see Ben and SP. Ben contains the game files and SP houses your save data. Remember where these files are located because now we are going to head back to the localization patch folder and click on patcher, then open patcher.exe. This is the Rockman EXE Zone special patcher program for the games that will walk you through the process. First, it will ask for one of the patch files. Click browse and navigate to the root of the localization patch folder. I suggest you play Phantom of Network first since Legend of Network is the sequel to it. So we're going to start with Phantom of Network. Open Mega Man PON English.RPZ, click Next, agree to the terms, and click Next again. Now we have to provide the original JAR and .SP files for the corresponding game. Click Browse, then navigate back to the Rock Band Ketai directory and find the bin folder for PON. Then select PON.JAR and the patcher program should automatically find the .sp file for you. If not, click browse and navigate to the sp folder and select pon.sp. When you're done, click next and the patcher will ask if you want to start a new game or migrate save data from the Japanese version. Choose start a new game to start fresh from chapter one. If you use the .sp file from your Japanese game in the prior step, you can choose to migrate and the patcher will use your existing save data. Or you can select migrate from existing save data and manually point the program to the .sp file you want to use. Once you have made your choice, click next and if you are patching your Phantom and Network game, you will now be asked to create a player ID for use with the online leaderboards in Phantom and Network's ranked battle mode. If you don't care about that, 
or you are planning to play on a Steam Deck where the online features aren't working quite yet, you may alternatively choose not to create a player ID. Just bear in mind that you won't be able to access the online ranked battle mode. If you are patching your Legend of Network game, this step will be skipped entirely as Legend of Network does not have any online functionality. Enter your username, or not, then move on to the next page where you can verify your game, patch, and save info. If it all looks good, progress to the final page and choose where to save the patch files. I highly recommend pointing the output files to the PON folder inside the localization patches emulator folder as we will need to move the files there anyway so the Doja emulator can use them. Click next one more time and the patching process will go by in a flash, followed by a message letting you know that it's done. Exit and if you wish, repeat the above steps but with Legend of Network patching the LON.jar file and outputting the patched files to the LON folder. And with that, you are ready to play on Windows. Simply go back to the localization patches emulator folder, then click Mega Man Phantom of the Network.exe or Mega Man Legend of the Network.exe. If everything was set up correctly, the exe file will open up the Doja emulator in the game simultaneously. Alright, let's jack in and get to play. Oh. Why is the screen so small? Like I said, the Doja emulator isn't exactly feature rich. It's just enough to get the game running for now. So you will immediately be disappointed to find that there are no built-in window size options. The emulator will only display the game at the original phone's native resolution, which as you can see is incredibly small. Well, there are a couple of ways that you can tackle this issue using resources outside the emulator. You can utilize Windows built-in magnifier feature to zoom in on the game using the settings detailed on the Trez README page to ensure a sharp scale. But honestly, I'm not too keen on the magnifier, it's a little unwieldy so I'm going to recommend my preferred method instead. In the description, I'll include a link to download and install OBS Studio. It's a streaming program that I personally use for those unaware. However, for our purposes, we are going to use it as an external window to view the game through. Once in OBS Studio, click the plus under Sources and then Window Capture. Press OK and under the Window dropdown, choose doja.exe, PON, or LON. Click OK and the game window will appear in your scene. Right click on the Window Capture, go to Transform, then fit the screen. This should blow up the game to the full screen. But you may notice it's a bit blurry due to OBS doing a bilinear scale on the source's low resolution. To alleviate that, click on Window Capture once again, go to Scale Filtering, and choose Point for our nearest neighbor scale that results in a good old sharp pixel look. Now you can use the OBS window to play your game on the big screen. Just remember to keep the main Doja emulator window focused while playing or your inputs aren't going to work. Speaking of inputs, you likely won't want to use the default keyboard controls either. Frankly, the original control scheme on the phone was weird, and that means we're going to have to get creative with our control methods. You can use an external program like Auto Hotkey to configure your keyboard controls. If you're like me and prefer using a game controller, you may use Steam Input, or I personally use the program Joy to Key to assign buttons to the corresponding keyboard keys. If you need some inspiration, on screen I'll put my personal configuration using a PS5 DualSense controller. You will notice that some keys are used twice in different places, and that's just because multiple actions we are used to doing in the GBA games are often simplified down to one key on the phone. So having a couple redundant commands was the best way I could replicate the feeling of the GBA titles as if we were playing these phone games on the Battle Network Legacy Collection. Or at least that's the idea. There are a couple of sacrifices that had to be made. For example, we won't be able to use the buster button to cancel out a selection or go back in a menu. That has to be its own button, so that's why I assigned that to circle. Other than that, the control scheme works surprisingly well for me. And if there's something you don't like, you can always edit the control scheme however you like. I'll go over configuring the Steam input in just a bit because that will be required for playing the games on Steam Deck. Speaking of, how do you play on Valve's Steam Deck anyway? Before we do anything, 
you will need to copy the localization patches emulator folder to your Steam Deck. If you don't already have that figured out, in the description I will include the video tutorial I used to enable SSHD on the Steam Deck and use an FTP like FileZilla to transfer files to and from Windows over the home network. Once you do get the emulator folder transferred to your Steam Deck, it's time to switch over to the desktop mode on your deck. Open up Steam, click the Games tab at the top, and choose Add a non-Steam game to my library. In the pop-up window, click Browse and navigate to your emulator folder. And you will see the Mega Man Phantom of the Network.exe and Mega Man Legend of the Network.exe files from before. Open whichever one of those you want, then click Add Selected Programs, and the exe file will be added as a non Steam game in your library. Make sure you do the steps separately for both games so that you can have two separate entries in your library. By the way, if you are using the Steam desktop client on Windows, you can follow the same steps we just outlined so that you can add the .exe files to your game library and use Steam input on Windows that way. Head back to gaming mode and find the PON or LON entry in your library. On each game, press the menu button and go to properties. Move to compatibility, check force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool and under the drop down, choose any version of Proton that you want. This step is crucial for you to do to ensure the games will run. From there, you're ready to play PON and LON on your Steam Deck as if it was an oversized Game Boy Advance. Once you are in the game, we can start configuring the settings to our liking. By default, we will once again run across the issue of the game window being too small. But unlike on Windows, the Steam Deck makes it easy to upscale the image. Simply go to your Quick Menu and head to the Performance tab. Scroll down until you reach Scaling Mode and change that to Integer for a pixel-perfect scale or fit if you want to fill the entire screen vertically at the cost of having a little bit of blur. Lastly, under Scaling Filter, change that to Pixel for a nearest neighbor scale and crispy pixel. Alright, let's wrap this up by configuring our controls now. Hit that Steam button and go into Controller Settings. Move over one and click Controller Settings once again. Make sure the game detects your gamepad at the top and if it does, press Edit Layout to begin editing your controls. Now you can click on each individual button, hover over to keyboard or numpad, and assign the keys as you like it. Or once again, you may copy my control scheme from before. The only difference in Steam input will be setting the key to set a regular chip in game. Go to the button you want to use and assign it to the shift key. Then press on the gear icon on the right, select add extra command, and now assign the number 3 key. Next, go into the gear icon next to the 3 and go to settings. Lastly, set fire start delay to 1. This will simulate pressing the hashtag key. And that's it! You're ready to rock on your Steam Deck. Just remember that you'll have to configure Steam input for both the Steam Deck itself, and if you ever switch to another external controller, you'll have to configure that too. One final thing you can do to spruce up the look of your games in your library is using the Steam artwork included in the localization patch download. Hover over your game and press the start button, then go to change artwork. Since there is no user created artwork in the database just yet, scroll right until you land on the manage tab. Here you can select artwork for each of the different ways that the game will be displayed throughout the Steam OS. On each category, press A and choose the folder icon. Now navigate to where your localization patch folder is. Open Steam Custom Artwork and select the artwork that matches the category you chose. Repeat this step for every type of artwork and hey, that looks much better. Not too shabby, eh? And with that, we're all done. I hope this guide video has been useful to you for getting started playing Mega Man Phantom and Legend of the Network. I truly hope you enjoyed the games because despite their flip phone limitations, these are still a couple of awesome, full-fledged Mega Man Bound Network games underneath the hood, and I highly recommend them to any fan of the series. You may be surprised how good these games feel to play and the sheer amount of content they provide. These are truly like a lost Bound Network 3.5 and Bound Network 5.5. 
Trez's fan localization patch completes the package with its high quality translation and additional quality of life features too, all of which you can read about in their readme section. And hey, now you can use what you learned today to play any of the other Rockman phone games that Scylab Secrets has preserved. There is a lost Mega Man Legends entry called Great Adventure on Five Islands among the bunch. Hopefully we will get to play that one in English next before too long. Anyway, be sure to stay tuned to Shadrock ZX for all things Mega Man, and even more Phantom and Legend of the Network as I will be posting a review on these games with the fan localization and live streaming them as well. Otherwise, until the next one, rock on and have yourselves a wonderful time zone. <laughs>